What up, everyone? Hi. Hey, everybody. Mike's not muted. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, how's that? Oh, I can't hear Noseman. Can you guys hear Noseman? Can you hear me? One, two. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's a blessing. How's it going, Noseman? <laughs> Can you hear me? I was uh, I, I wasn't. It's here. just very soft. Am I still soft? There you go. No, that's better. Yeah, that's better. I'm not touching anything. So something else is happening here. Mm. Just it's speak crazy. louder. Just yell. That's what I do. I only. Yeah. I'm going to bring the microphone closer. Hello. Oh. Mars is <laughs> happening with Noseman Hour. <laughs> How is everyone? I'm going to be looking. This is my feedback monitor over there, and I've got other monitors around me and all that. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not having a seizure or anything. I'm just looking around, trying to figure out where everything is. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on which uh, part of the planet you are. If uh, and for some people, uh, good uh, well Friday, right? I guess for Australia and Japan, it's uh, Friday already. And uh, today we have this uh, Ask the Trainer session, uh, where it's a sort of a follow up from uh, the. The mystifying post production we did uh, about uh, uh, tracking and and um, adding CG to photos and stills and all that, and uh, I haven't seen any questions relating to that. So um, we are just going to sit here and do nothing uh, until you ask uh, questions. No, we're not. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> try and get to uh, as much as we can and uh, make this uh, a fun hour uh, plus overrun. So let me quickly go through the uh, the housekeeping, which uh, I <laughs> I've got two keyboards and two mice mouses. I don't know if it's uh, the same as the the actual animal the mouse. And uh, I deleted <laughs> all my notes, but uh, yeah, undo to the to the uh, rescue here. So uh, welcome to this uh, Ask the Trainer uh, episode, uh, a special follow up. Uh, in the background, I'm going to start with our very good friend, Carl Johnstone, uh, which is doing the production. Uh, amazing job, as usual, trying to uh, stop me from doing mistakes. Uh, we don't want Lionel to stop doing mistakes, though. Talking about Lionel, Lionel Vissadomini is a master trainer at Max and a teacher instructor in oh. France at various training centers and schools. He worked for many years in the broadcast industry and for advertising agencies. Specializing in motion design, Lionel loves anything that moves and can be rendered track editor. And um, is that uh, promo still going on, Lionel? No, it's over. Oh, so sorry, nothing free from Lionel today. No. If you're kind to him and ask him nice questions, and uh, uh, he, I, I think he can do something for us later on. I'm going to move over to uh, Dustin uh, Valkema, a very good um, a friend. Dustin Valkema is a Maxon certified trainer three journalist and composite photographer with over 15 years of industry experience. What I haven't asked you, Dustin, is it composite or composite? Uh, composite? Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't know. English is not my native language, although I speak it uh, nearly perfectly uh, without an accent. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> tomato, <laughs> tomato, that's what I said. <laughs> My standard reply when people say, oh, you have a British accent, it's not me that has the accent. So <laughs> Dustin has over 15 years of industry experience, and he's now focused on education and mentorship through his company, CG Hacks, which provides VFX overlays, 3D textures, and material libraries and other resources to bridge the gap between 2D and 3D workflows. Dustin's passion for helping others stems from his own experiences with failure and learning from them. He believes that with a bit of creative tenacity and a willingness to learn, Anything is possible in the world of digital art. You can find him on YouTube at CG Hacks or on his website, www. I can never say that without, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting that. So <laughs> cghacks.com, that's the easiest thing. Uh, do you have any um, promos going on or anything like that? Any freebies? No. Uh, oh, yeah, we've, we've currently got a sale. We've got uh, some awesome freebies. Uh, we talked about it uh, quite a bit this month and last month. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a new, uh, our new plugin, Smartify Layers for Photoshop uh, is amazing uh, with working with 3D renders. Uh, convert multiple objects to individual smart objects or multiple layers to individual smart objects with the click. 
Uh, shout out to Josh Feniger. He's in the uh, in our chat here. Uh, he's the guy who put that all together. Uh, we'll see. Super cool. Yeah. Anyways, that's us. Uh, Maxon DPP30. Uh, if you want a 30% discount on our products. Excellent. Let's see if we have that here. Do we have that? I leave it. Okay, uh, um, I will leave it to Kyle. You know, whenever I can't do something, uh, Kyle, can you can you fix it? Uh, the most useful person in this panel. Uh, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, of course, uh, we have uh, two members of our own uh, training team. And in run random order, I'm just moving my hand around. We have <laughs> Darren Frankovitz. Um, master trainer extraordinaire and uh yeah you all know uh darren uh he is um uh, yeah he knows stuff so feel free to ask any question i'm no nose man but and he knows nose man right so he knows plenty of things and of course last but not least ian robinson the master trainer zbrush extraordinarily uh, i hope you break your hand good at um, you know no actually not your hand your your pointer just your finger get a, yeah. a, a little fracture so you can't do those amazing things because i'm jealous <laughs> i'm i'm jealous i'm, I'm my I'll envy you. yeah is well don't is, worry i got you I'll, I'll you'll be a zebrush expert in no time i promise you <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic so uh yeah um ian is joining us uh, here as well and uh just uh, check out the stuff he does. Uh, he's always with us, so uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to show us something today as well. I might. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to bring up what I'm going to bring up here. So I'm going to bring up a screen and bring my screen up. There we go. Windows. I don't. Me and Windows don't don't work nicely. Um, oh, let's go. First of all, uh, haven't I? Oh, there we go. That's my screen. So first of all, visit the Maxon.net uh, website for information about products and uh, all sorts of other things, links and so forth. One of these links is the Maxon events page where everything that's happening uh, is there for you to filter with this uh, really nice search uh, engine. And uh, you can always go to the Maxon training team YouTube channel and watch everything we do here gets recorded and then timestamps are added courtesy of uh, Dr. Sassy, um, our magnificent master trainer, Dr. Sassy, that knows much more than 3D. I think he knows about 16 more dimensions than 4D. Yeah, he knows, uh, he knows, he knows too much. So uh, you can go to the Maxon certification if, oh, and of course, YouTube channels, uh, you can go to the Maxon YouTube channel or the Red Giant uh, YouTube channel. Do we still sustain the um, uh, ZBrush uh, YouTube channel, Ian? Um, yeah, we still sustain the, the ZBrush YouTube and ZBrush Twitch. Um, okay. And yeah, everything um, on the website is, is being moved over to Maxon slowly. But yeah, the YouTube channel and the Twitch are still. still so there's plenty of uh, content for you to procrastinate on while you're, you don't want to move on with your projects. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Now, if you want to become a certified user or a certified uh, a certified trainer, go to the Maxon certification page and check out all the information. And uh, yeah, uh, you can find all the information here. Let's go to the design and animation tour, which is going on and in a few days. It's in Nashville. And again, uh, the, this tour is going to go on with uh, a host of uh, um, great presenters on uh, Maxon products. So it's going to be fun. If it's close to you, I would say it's uh, worth uh, trying to uh, take a few days off or, or you know, uh, it's not off. Sorry, sorry. It's not holidays. It's work. So you can go and uh, attend one of these uh, animation tours and talk to the actual people uh, that uh, use or create this stuff. And yeah, convince, uh, your, you know, convince your boss that you need to go to the show to talk to trainers mm -hmm. because it's for research and development of your stuff. So go tell them, we have to show up. You have to go to work day, you have to show up and then we'll just all hang out and have a good time. Well, it, it increases your productivity. So, you know, people, are, uh, bosses don't give raises, but if you say that you can increase your productivity, I think that that works 
uh, as a good argument for that. So you can use that. Now, uh, merch and uh, swag. So go to the Ask the Trainer uh, part of the Maxon merch store. Let me copy this and paste it in the comments here. Boop. I'm, I'm doing Carl's job. Right. I shouldn't do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So go there, and uh, the code is, and uh, just like magic, Carl is going to post the code to get free merch and only pay for uh, shipping and handling. And uh, that's done with the with uh, the housekeeping. Took me about thirteen minutes to do that. Uh, we're gonna. I'm going to be sharing that stuff on the on the um, ZBrush channels as well through the restream. So the code will be coming in soon, guys. Be coming in oh, soon. Code. ZBrush and Substance. Excellent. So let's see if we have any questions. I'm going to go and uh, go we to chats. Do. We do have one question. Yes. And uh, I think, Lionel, did you want to? Yes, it's, yeah, it's a question yeah. about X particles, actually. So I was wondering, uh, am, I, am I going to, to show that? But uh, yes, why not? So it's a question about, uh, I was trying to achieve real, realistic rain effect with splashes on the dry surface using C40 and X particles, but failed. So yes, I can show you that. Uh, I would like to know how realistic you want the splashes to be. So I'll just show the main splashes, splashes and maybe just show some hints on how to do real splashes. So this is all, uh, I mean, I didn't prepare anything, so we'll show. I do have X particle installed, so that's, that's uh, fine. So let's create XP system. But just before, let's create a very simple scene, create the rain and some object so we can see the splashes. So for example, a plane here and a figure and why not uh, a platonic, whatever, just placeholder. Okay, now let's create our X particle system and we have an emitter and I'm going to create the rain real quick. There is several way to create rain, but the easiest way is to create a simple box so emitter shape let's create a box a big box this is our cloud it gives more realistic result i think because well the rain comes from clouds uh, which are sort of big box of water and we will in the emission put the speed to zero so we will just have particles uh, gathering up here. Now we need to make them fall. So we're going to add a modifier, which will be a motion modifier, which will be gravity. And that's it for the rain. Huh? So thank you. <laughs> well, now we need to, to create uh, the splashes and so on. So let's increase the size maybe of our plane and be to see something. And we need to use the XP Collider. So actually there's several way again to, to make a particle collider, but the easiest here is the XP Collider. So I'm going to put all the object here inside a connect. So connect object is this one. So it will be seen as one geometry. Let's uncheck weld. I'm going to add now the X Incidium. So where it is now? I think it's in other tags. No. Where did they put it? Uh, extension. Here we are. Incident tags, the XP Collider. And that's going to work already. So maybe let's change also our emitter in the display. Maybe something uh, like lines. Lines are going to show almost as yeah, particles like that. Now you can see that the particles are bouncing on the floor, but it's not quite what we want because we want them to explode to make some splashes. So it's still here. 
and you need to create some spawn. So there we're going to the spawn. So first here in the collider, we could use uh, the bounce is how much it's going to bounce. Maybe we don't need that much friction. That will be useful later because uh, the particles are going to slide too much. So let's increase the friction so they won't slide that much. I think that's all for now. And in the spawn, now we're going to enable the spawn. This is where we're going to everything, the, the magic is going to happen. Because when uh, the particle is going to crash on any object, it's going to spawn new particles. It's just a trick. Uh, it's not already exploding, uh, but creating particles that looks like an explosion, which is a splash of water. So that's why I, I wanted to know how realistic we want the, the splashes to be. Because uh, this is just a generic um, rain, I would say. And we don't want to see a close-up uh, ultra slow motion splash. So here it's just a splash spawn. We need to add an emitter. So the new emitter is there. Let's put it inside uh, here. It's not mandatory, but it's, it's better. And it's going to be controlled by this one. And spawn particle position, collision point. We need to do something very important. Because if I just, uh, well, let's see. All right, yeah, you can see the problem here. We have a lot of particles and it doesn't look like uh, some rain. So it's weird because the particles are going to hit the ground. Uh, then they're going to bounce. Then they're going to hit the ground again. Uh, each time uh, they hit the ground, they're going to spawn a new particles. That's not the way rain works. Uh, the particle of water is going to explode or create some particles, but the original particle of water is killed. So spawn only once, kill original particle after spawning. Okay, now we can, we can control a number of particles. See, it's better. Now we need to make the particle explode. So this is uh, the direction. Uh, each particle is going to generate 10 new particles. And I think, if I remember well, we go to the XP emitter uh, group here in emission. This is the speed. So is it there? Spawn particle speed, absolute, yes. So this is where we create um, the speed. So let's increase the speed. All right, but that's better. We can see some kind of explosion. But now we need to, the new particles need to be killed quickly because here they just last forever. Here we have killed the original particles. Okay, but the new particles need to be killed because they're going just to accumulate and slide all over the place. It's not realistic. So we're going to hear our uh, XP emitter spawning. Uh, this uh, emitter here and this is in the full lifespan let's switch it to maybe seven frame with the variation of one of two three maybe and here it is so we have our particles making the the splash we do have some uh, falling down I think we need to make some thickness to um, yeah or increase the sampling of the, I think if we just change the plane to a box, it's going to fix it. That's because the, our particles are going just too fast. They're too fast and uh, they don't register with uh, anything that doesn't have a thickness. It's pretty bad actually. So it's a good idea to create something with the thickness. So it's better to, this way we can, um, Hey, look. hey, Lionel. Yes. Are there um, like sub steps with uh, X particles? Yes, that's the other the other thing I wanted to check. We will see if, it, if that works because we, when you add sub steps, so you're going to calculate uh, additional steps between each frame. Uh, it's going to slow down everything. So maybe okay. we can we can uh, put it off with that. So here I using the geometry axis capsule. 
on the cube so that we can have our cube laying on the ground. That's better because now if I just increase the seize here, you see it's not going to slide. Okay, is it still inside? No, I need to put it inside my connect object. And well, that's better, but it's still not it. So we can go to uh, our X particle uh, emitter. And is it here in the exclusion? I need to remember that I don't I don't use X particle every day. So uh, I think the sub steps are in the emitter spawning. In advanced, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Is it in the extended data? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to remember what it, what it is. It, it, it does exist. Maybe it's, yes, in the X particles. Yes, there we are. Of course, that makes sense. It's in the general settings of the scene. So subframe steps, that should do it. And anyway, if it doesn't, I will just kill the particle that go through and we, uh, nobody will see it. Yes, that's better. We still have a few, but less than before. Hey, Lionel, so the collisions is set to 100. So is that like, like a particle hitting the cube like once? That's like yes. one collision or each okay. rain particles uh, when it's going to hit the ground or uh, the object or anything that inside the connect object is going to generate a cloud of particles that will be drawn to the ground uh, through the gravity. And those particles are going to last just a few, uh, a few frames uh, so that it makes the illusion of, uh, of rain. And also here, I just increased here the number to spawn. 10 particles uh, was, I think, a bit too low to, to give a good effect. Okay, that's better. You can see here. And the thing missing, of course, you can see here, the it's not a splash. I mean, this is not the way to create a real splash, but uh, it does the trick uh, if you add motion blur. I, I, I could see in the, yes, inside motion blur would make them look like streaks and right on time that's exactly the point uh, here i just use the trick of the display to render lines but that would be the same for those particles here anyway i can try and it will look more like um, streaks of rain so let's go to the display and this is here editor display let's switch to line yeah you see and then it's just a matter of controlling the, the length of the line. Uh, when you're going to do an actual render, you're going to use particles. Uh, and this will be, uh, well, motion blur that will, that, that will do the trick. So it will be a bit long to, to render. Uh, I like here to have just um, here uh, lines because it, it gives it the illusion of, uh, of splashes. Mm -hmm. This setup is very quick. It's not the most realistic, but if you, if it just a detail of the scene, it works pretty well. That's awesome. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, X-Particle is perfect for that. It's so easy to, to show. And to have actual uh, splashes of water, well, I don't know if there's, there are other questions. I, I would just <laughs> stop right now, but. Uh, yes, if you want to add, so I, I will not do that because this is much more difficult and really longer. Uh, you're going to use in the generator, I think. It's one utility. Mm, I think it's in the modifier. And the generate modifier, it's the XP, XP, XP crown, I think. What it's going to do, it's going to create for each particle. Let's take a look here at the splash. This is a particle exploding. So it's each particle here is going to generate another particle 
that will stay behind uh, and create this crown uh, or the splash. So this is much more intensive to do because uh, it's going to create a huge number of particles that you will need to mesh it through uh, the VDB uh, in X particles. Uh, this is the open uh, the VDB open VDB mesher to splash uh, to to mesh the the particle and create the actual crown of water. Uh, you're not going to do that on a whole scene like that because it's going to create a huge number of particles really and a lot of geometries uh. it's for close-up like that uh, but uh, it works very well I think there are example on the incident um, website uh, I'll try to, to find one that, that do you, the way uh. do you, Lionel do you remember the um, the ripple shader in cinema 4d yes um that would be like, very good yeah to create uh if you have a ground with um you could add that on top huh? well you, you can say it i, I think you're we're thinking the same thing okay what I, well what i'm wondering is would it could you could you use a ripple shader in a way that it would only respond to that first particle hit and not the not the like spawn Yes, yes. Uh, I think here we, we would need to well to, to do it uh, the, the usual way. Uh, actually, X particle is very well integrated with Cinema 4D. So I think, I think we can use uh, the, um, the particles like that directly in a field. Okay. It's going to, and I think it's Chris Schmidt who showed something with the um, on his last video about uh, the new release of Cinema 4D, he showed us some some trick uh, using uh, the vertex tag, uh, the new vertex tag uh, going live on a geometry to create some ripple effect. Uh. Okay. I know he did it. I don't remember how exactly, but he was just using uh, fields. Uh, so that means you can use um, any render to to render the, the the ripple the ripple effect i don't know if you guys you you know uh, you what i'm talking about uh, this uh, this tutorial uh, it was from the presentation i think of the very last uh, cinema 4d uh, 2023 what, was, was it his like what's new or was it yes what's okay new, yeah. okay I'm gonna search for it. Yeah, I can see some. Well, that's uh, not bad, Lionel. Not bad. <laughs> but but uh, we can do something quite similar using uh, just Cinema 4D without any plugins using Thinking Particle. And while Lionel was showing uh, this uh, excellent and uh, very realistic and very oh simple. Uh, if you know around uh, thinking particle, uh, X particles, uh, I was working on a thinking particles version. Now it does have its limitations; terms and conditions apply. But because after uh, X particles, let's say, became the normal, um, uh, let's say, Cinema 4D particle uh, system, the the one that's used uh, uh, mostly. Uh, people and uh, can I take the screen? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So this this is, for example, on the uh, Incidem website. Uh, there is even a tutorial to do that in TCOP. and yes. so it's using the XP uh, XP Crown. And so again, uh, X Particles is uh, uh, the whole suite of tools that Incidem uh, provides is a beast of um, uh, workflows, uh, but Very powerful. This is Cinema 4D without any plugins. And this is an equivalent uh, setup. Now, this is a five minute setup, so uh, it can be improved. And uh, if you're interested, I can show you how it's done. This is the, the actual Expresso code. So, for anyone that's not familiar and thinks that uh, Cinema 4D does not have a competent particle system, well, we do. It's about, I think it's uh, thinking particles is slightly younger than myself, and I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Uh, so it's uh, old technology, but it was so good, 
uh, with all its limitations, if you are decent with uh, a bit of uh, logic in uh, Expresso, you can put some things uh, together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from scratch. And I'm going to create a plane, uh, and a plane that's pointing towards the uh, plus Z. And let me just rotate it here. Now, one of the limitations of thinking particles is that it uh, prefers to work with uh, mesh objects, like uh, editable objects. It doesn't work well with the procedural objects. There are ways to do it. We've shown them in the past, but for now, I'm going to call this sky, because that's where the rain usually comes from, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the ground here and rotate this the other way around and make it a bit bigger. I'm going to call this ground. Nothing groundbreaking. The pun, great. Uh, right, sorry. <clears throat> I'm trying to be funny. Come on. I, I, I got you. I do didn't we... want to keep on muting my mic and muting my mic, but you got me. You got me. There you go. <laughs> so we need to put uh, signs applaud, laugh, and or add laughter, um, uh, a laughing track or something like that. So let me just change the, color, change the colors of these so we can see them a bit better. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is go and add from the programming tags a, an Expresso tag. The Expresso tag now uh, allows us to uh, add some um, thinking particles. And uh, the way I like to uh, turn this on uh, so I can go to the thinking particles and uh, even search for things. Now, my favorite particle generator is called Matter Waves. Matter. Now, nobody knows why it's called Matter Waves. I think uh, the people that named it have uh, retired since. And uh, the P Matter Waves allows you, amongst other things, to emit from an object. So I'm going to drag the sky in here. And uh, we have rain. Now, in order to work nicely with particles, and this is independent on the system you're using, whether you're using X particles, thinking particles, or other software, it's good to work with groups because you can uh, define um, what each particle group does separately. It's very easy to work with things. So you go to the TP settings, thinking particle settings, and uh, let's go here, right click, and say, I'm going to add two groups. So right click, right click. I'm going to call group one, let's say, in the Sure. And uh, what color is rain? It's blue. And then I'm going to say splash. And what color is uh, a splash? I would say it's green. That makes no sense, but I'm going to say it anyway. So we have these two groups. I'm going to leave this little window here. You know, in my imagination, initial rain is blue and splashes are green. Anyway. So we are generating some particles which are white now, which means it's all the particles, all the groups. The all group means that uh, all the particles are whatever they are, and uh, they are colored white. I want to generate these particles in the initial group. So if you type group here and go there, two P groups, we do that on purpose to keep you on your edge. You know, the more you use your brain, the smarter you become. Uh, and I'm going to say, look at this little node that says P group, and it's the one from uh, the TP standard. If you want to see the difference, it's the one that has the input and not the output. And you tell them the particle birth is every particle that gets born. And we put this where we want to tell the system what this particle is going to do. So if you click on the uh, P group and drag the initial from here into here, then anything that gets born from this system is going to be in the particle group called initial. You won't see the changes because these particles were born before, you know, it's a previous generation. There you go. Excellent. So these are just particles that are falling. Now, we do need some gravity here, don't we? So let's go and type gravity, and you get a peak gravity. Now, the peak gravity... Uh, needs an object in order to, to work. So you can see here an object. And a null will do. Call this G for gravity. And uh, the gravity is always in the, in the direction of uh, the Z axis. So I'm going to point it downwards. You can simulate winds by pointing it in another direction. Now, initially, this won't work. There is no gravity here. Because we need to, to designate two things. Number one, the object in here. And let's see again, it won't work again. 
And number two, which particles are affected? So this little input, for some reason, thinking particles always brings in their inputs and outputs without labels. So right click on here, go to ports and say show names. So it's asking for a particle. Now you can always connect it here, but what I like to do to uh, keep things nicely grouped, pass, there's a P pass. And this P pass informs the graph of which group is going to do what. So I want the all the particles, because even the splashes need to have gravity. So all the particles need to have gravity, which is in the direction of the object. So now you're going to see gravity. Whoop, they accelerate. Excellent. So the next thing we need to do is identify a collision. And this collision is going to do two things. It's going to get the position and the normal direction of that collision and spawn a bunch of particles. And the other thing it's going to do, it's going to kill the rain. I know it sounds vicious, but as far as being told, rain is not sentient. So for this, we're going to use a deflector. A deflector. See, don't, I, I cannot teach you how to type. It's as if my fingers are made of rubber when, when I type. So P deflector. Now the that's P deflector. I, sorry, that's, that's, how I, that's how I spell out Wednesday. I have to type when, Wednesday. I have to do that. I don't know why. So like, I just, I, I just related to you right now. <laughs> well, I think it's all extremely smart people because it happens to me as well. So there, there is uh, something going on there. Now, uh, I want... This deflector, I'm going to put this here so we can see the parameters of the deflector. And uh, the deflector, first of all, needs an object. And this object is the ground. And uh, you can use box. It's just going to take the bounding box. Or you can use um, object. The geometry, I haven't figured out what it does. It's taken me 25 years. I will figure it out eventually. But nonetheless, for a flat thing, box is a bit faster. But now the question again becomes, you know, if you right click and say port names, show names, it's asking for which particles? Well, the particles we need to find if they are, um, you know, touching this, because that's what this does. The P deflector will allow us to see if a collision event happened. So this is a Boolean. You can see down here what everything is when you hover over it. We're going to find the position and use that to spawn a number of particles there in another group. And we need the uh, normal direction, which will inform us um, on the direction of the normal. So we can tell the spawning uh, emitter which direction we want those splashes to go. Uh, so the other question is, which particles this happens? Well, again, we copy this and we say, I want the initial particles the initial particles to check for a deflection, right? To see what, what happens here, right? I'm going to move this so we can see everything. There we go. That's even better. Now, what are we trying to do? Well, we are trying to emit some particles. And the emitter that allows us to define a position and so forth is a storm, the P storm. And the P storm, it has the emitter position, which is the event position. And uh, this is going to, there you go. So you can see those little circles. These are the collisions of the particles, but they're not dying. We haven't programmed that in. It just creates a bunch of white particles now over there. So we need to control uh, what we want this to do. First of all, I only want to spawn on... That is a trigger that tells it when to spawn, when the event happens. So for each every, and every particle that collides with the surface, the position uh, is going to be used in here when the event happens. So only when these particles collide now. Now, one thing we need to make sure is the deflector currently, because it's set to box, it uses the rotation, the matrix of the ground, but it only records things that are happening within this white box. So if you set this to object, now it should record all the collisions that are happening across the plane. Now you can see that the particles are going in that direction. That's because the P-storm does not know which way to emit those uh, particles. But for the fun of it, I'm, first of all, I'm going to make it very small. So a, a point, so zero, zero, 
zero. I have this fantastic gaming keyboard that makes loud noises and I just can't use it for some reason. So I want to extend the, the, the cone uh, to something like 170 degrees. So th th these uh, spread out. I'm going to make these um, shoot uh, with every touch. Let's shoot 20 of these particles here. Good. And I want their lifetime to be quite short. So let's say uh, 15 frames. So now, when these are colliding with the, the plane, now first of all, you can see they're bouncing up. The blue ones are bouncing up. And that's because we have told the initial particles to uh, deflect. And we're going to take care of this in a, in a second. Because we've set the emitter position, we set the emitter event. Now we want to set the emitter alignment. And this, for some reason, is a matrix. And uh, the event is a normal. How do we convert a normal, so a direction of the normal, into a matrix uh, that has a rotation? And that is a specific node called vector, vector two matrix. So vector, not vectors, vector, vector two matrix. Don't confuse, there's a little s here. So individual vector into matrix. So now, Wait a minute. Uh, what's the difference between an adapter that converts vectors to a matrix and then a calculator that converts vector to a matrix? Oh, that that's uh, extremely simple. You select this, you right click, and you say show help, <laughs> and you read through, and then you <laughs> email me with what you found. All right, uh, I'm on it. Good. Thank you. So. We have the, the first uh, part of the effect. And uh, what we need to do now is tell the particles that are bouncing, look, it's going up. So it's coming down, then going up. I just want to kill, I apologize, I want to kill the initial particle upon collision. So again, we know when the event uh, happens. So we are going to use the exterminator of particles, the P-dye. And uh, the particles we need to kill are the initial. And we need to kill them on the event. The last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these particles uh, enter their splash group. So just like previously, I'm going to go and say P group, get one of these. It's easier to copy it. Go here and say particle birth, the equivalent of this, the particle birth. Well, I'm, I'm expanding this by pressing control and double clicking on the, on the top. And I'm saying that on the event, again, right click, show names. When the event happens, I want to kill the particle Sorry, when the event happens, I want to put the birth particle in that new group. But I, my group is initial. I don't want it in the initial. I want it in the splash. There we go. So now, what we have here is initial particles falling, touching a plane. When they touch a plane, they record their position and their normal direction. Give that to the P-storm which will, for each uh, of these collision events, is going to create 20 particles, just a shot, which means only in the first frame, with a lifespan of whatever this is, and we can randomize it a bit, with a speed of whatever this is. <clears throat> it still complies to gravity because every particle um, is, is taken into consideration with uh, the gravity. And um, uh, it uses a cone of 170 degrees. And when these new particles, the green ones, are born, they're entered in the group splash, and the previous particle, the blue one, at the same moment dies, because the event tells us which moment these events happen. We have this spawning happening, we have the group change happening, and we have the death of the original particles, and they will be sorely missed. <clears throat> so, 
this would be a uh, an introduction to how you would go about uh, setting up something like this. Now, the main limitation is that you can't just create a bunch of objects and expect this without any other uh, secondary things to um, you know bounce off all the objects. So <clears throat> there could be uh, ways to uh, do it with uh, each and every one of the objects and various groups and stuff like that, or use a connect object, but then you will have to use a script to, to read the objects here. So the limitations of using exclusively uh, editable uh, geometry in some cases are not very helpful but as you know as a particle uh, operation you could do these and and you can render these in redshift and you can do whatever you want you can put them uh, Sharon asked the question about um, uh, not dots but streaks uh, Darren offered the correct solution which is using motion blur with uh, redshift and there's another way if you want to visualize the uh, the lines you take a particle group and you use it in a tracer object. I'm just going to show you for one of the two groups. So go to MoGraph, use it. Well, you could also change the view type. To, yes, you uh, can. Yeah. yeah. The view type here, flakes, dots, and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you want physical splines, you get a tracer object. And in the tracer object, you can trace the actual, but you need to grab the group because Cinema 4D's object manager doesn't know what's going on in the thinky particle context. So uh, the other thing you can do, I'm going to trace the paths. Now you're going to see they're going to create long lines. I want these lines to be shorter. And you control that by saying limit. And I'm going to limit from the end for, let's say, four frames. And these are going to be four frames long. Not bad, actually. I like this. So I'm going to make one more. I'm going to trace my splashes, remove this, and uh, make this three. So now we're going to have a lot of little lines splash tracer three why am i not getting lines i am getting lines i just couldn't see them there you go look at that come on that's not bad is anyone complaining it's raining <laughs> raining oh, did i save this no i will save it later on <clears throat> okay so uh, nice thank you very nice much. Okay, um, let me let me unshare my screen, and uh, let's put all our faces up, and let's see who's going to get the baton, and move on. I'm I'm reading questions now, so I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. I, I um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one to say it. Um, just a tremendous amount of pee jokes in there. <laughs> Yes, very true, very true. <laughs> like we we have our we have our secret chat and uh yeah, <laughs> we, we just can't get we can't get over it. The the T the TP the thinking particle. But you know um, what? You're going to remember it this way forever. That's yes. it. So if you were one who thought of those jokes while that was happening, now you will never not think of it. <laughs> <laughs> 12 year old us was going wild in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do want to say I do want to say something just uh, for uh, generally just to feed the imagination of our uh, viewers. Uh, you can you can use the setup I just showed you with uh, other things. For example, you can use a field to read the particle group and it will read the positions and you can use that in a a uh, vertex map on an object, a dense object. And you can uh, create, let's say, pyro, because you can use, you, you can emit pyro from vertex maps. And if you can create vertex maps using particles, then, for example, instead of having the rain bounce, you can have little puffs of smoke appearing there. Um, if it's like rocks falling from the sky and hitting uh, a dusty surface and so forth. Uh, so th these things can be used interchangeably. And I think, um, and uh, Lionel, please correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, uh, even X particles can actually uh, affect vertex maps and stuff like that. It works with, with uh, all the variety of, of fields we have and everything. It does, it does. It should be uh, registered as a standard particle, Cinema 4D particles, so you can use them with fields, um, whatever we want. Yeah. Fantastic. 
super awesome. We all we had a comment coming through uh, the ZBrush channel saying that this looks awesome. By the way, great stuff. And just for anyone who is curious, these with these will be available after the stream, so you can go back and watch them and pick. Uh, you know, go through these techniques that are being shown today, so you can replicate them yourself. So now I'm like super curious, Ian. Like, is there some sort of like a uh, like rain brush in ZBrush. I mean, there's so many different type of brushes. I haven't even gotten through all of them. I mean, if if you were well, doing like you know, I mean, I know there's like a, a fiber mesh. Well, so so there's no real there's there's no real particle system in ZBrush, right? But you know, there are a few there are a few ways that you could go about doing some, something similar, but not through the simulation. Uh, I would actually go Z that into Cinema 4D to get a simulation like that, okay. just going through, where fiber mesh would be used more nice. for like getting beards or hair, um, or even hair cards uh, for that matter, which you could you could manipulate the mesh to do that. So um, yeah, there, there's, I would say, you know, the particle system Cinema 4D is, is fantastic. And now that you can go Z into that, I would set up my characters and move them over and then I'm going to learn that particle system to then bring some life into and some uh, some world building onto my designs. Cool. Thank you. Well, since there are no questions, I'm going to take... Oh, question. So would you use a volume builder on the... Oh, come on. I was just going to show that. Why did you ask me? <laughs> Actually, perfect question. There we go. <laughs> on that note, that's exactly what I was going to... Vitas? Are you in my mind again? Hmm? Get out of there. So this is a setup I did. And uh, what you will do is get a volume builder and make sure it has a, a decent uh, voxel size. And in this volume builder, what will we drag? Well, I'm going to drag the tracer. Now, let me remember, this is the original trace, and this is the slash. So you can go to volume builder, builder <clears throat> and uh, put in the splash and you can see now it's creating these little interesting things now because the volume builder uh the sorry the the tracer is a spline the volume builder allows you to do certain things with with spline so first of all let's play around with the radius let's make it 0.5 now we do need to have a voxel size smaller than the radius otherwise it will create nothing so let me make this 0.5 and let's make this i'm going to make it one Make it nice and comic -y. So that was my mouse. When I, when I strike my, there we go. So now let's go here and see how we can change this. And uh, this creates a number of uh, little uh, mini spheres. You can increase these spheres, the fidelity, by, by increasing the density. And then you have the scale along. And you can control scale per segment. There you go. So now each segment is going to have a thin, Going to make this even smaller until I get that warning. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> That's when you stop. There you go. So now we have these little interesting things over here. Where, uh, yeah, look at those nice comicky things. And I can tell this uh, splash to uh, be more uh, frames and play the simulation. Look at that. And then you can take this and put it, uh, put a measure over it. There we go. And we have these nice little meshed splashes. That's super cool, man. That's super cool. And the, the you know, the, this you can take this to so many extents because these groups uh, can be used uh, in any uh, particular way. Um, I think, let me try this. I'm going to take a cloner. I'm going to put a sphere under the cloner, make the sphere quite small, and tell the cloner to be in object mode. Even the object can be a particle. So now each particle is going to be a sphere as well. So there are so many different ways you can uh, play around with this, and you can use the, the thinking particles and even multi instances to make it even faster. 
And uh, there's some weird things here where it, it can stretch in the direction, it can scale based on the particle scale uh, and all that. So there's quite a bit of uh, control. And the magic is that instead of a sphere, you can use a cube. Can you imagine that? Little cubes of water. You can't, you know, you, you can't make these things up. This is pure magic. Yeah, that's Cube, super cool. Cubes of water. There, there is something too. So th there is a system in ZBrush that it was called Nano Mesh, and I would I would loosely call it a particle system. But um, we could we could showcase that too for those who are wondering how to do it. Again, not real simulations like water. I couldn't really replicate that water uh, as easily for sure. That could take some time with dynamics. But with the Nano Mesh system, if you're sculpturing, you want a sculptural approach and populate. A bunch of mesh in different locations we could show that at some point as well or Ian, whenever would you mind uh, showing us uh, some nano mesh i would not mind showing some nano mesh absolutely well i have this nice drone here but i'm going to switch projects for that just to showcase some nano mesh stuff so i'm going to pull up this demo head real quick this so this is our our base female head here so nano mesh, what nano mesh really works well off of are the different poly groups. So if I switch over to the Z modeler brush, it's going to work off of the different poly groups that I can have selected. So this whole color system right here is just one poly group. So for if I wanted to build like a nano mesh brush, right, I'm going to need something to work off of. So I'm going to hit solo and then just real quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe grab a sphere, say something like this. And I'm just going to make something pretty quickly. So I'm just going to squish the sphere just a little bit. I'll even throw up like a bend curve, um, which you can activate with the gizmo. And just by hitting W and then coming up here to this cog wheel, selecting bend curve. And then what this will let me do is kind of just quickly bend some shapes to get me something a little, little organic, a little natural, right? And then I could switch back and maybe make that a bit thinner. And before I show the nano mesh one, what I will show real quick is the array mesh because the array mesh is a lot of fun because if I wanted a shape like this, like let's say I'm building a flower, then what I could do is um, activate array mesh. First, I'm gonna come up here and accept my bin curve. So I'm gonna say accept. I'm gonna turn on array mesh. And what's cool about this is of course we have our X axis going screen right to left and then or left to right and then y is up and down and z is in the depth right so if i wanted to make let's say a flower i'll turn on array mesh i'll do like five repeating and then i'm going to lock the position in the transpose and i'm going to want to rotate and what i'll do is i'll turn around and rotate on the z axis here about 360 degrees and then with the gizmo now you can see here i can quickly just come through and move and position uh, something that kind of looks like a little bit of a flower, right? So something like that. And if I want to make this a full mesh, I just come on down here to make mesh. And now all of this is, is uh, live geometry, where before it's just this one. If I come up here and turn off array mesh before I make that, um, before I say make mesh, then that array mesh um, we'll just hide the preview. So up until this point, it's a preview. Once I'm done and I like everything that I see here, I can say make mesh and now I have this. And so now what I can do is I can also say auto groups because they're not welded. So now this gives me different poly groups. So from here, I can turn around and make this into a brush. So I could say B for brush and all the way down at the bottom, or I could come up to the brush menu at the top, and say create. And I'm going to first create a, I want to first create this to be a brush and I want it in the position in which it's going to be at. So I could say, you know, hey, let's go ahead and create a new brush. And so I'm going to say, I want this to be brand new. I don't want to append it to my current brush, which you could if you were building a much wider brush. But for now, I will say new. And so now I have this brush here and I can drag out all these little components, right? So what we can do from here is then convert this into a nano mesh. And notice here, if I take a look at the icon, it might be a little hard to see, but that's like kind of, it's the shape of this area. 
when I come up to brush and say create nano mesh, now it turns it into kind of a cube of sorts. So how do we go about utilizing this, right? So I'm going to come back to the female head here. I'm going to turn on that wireframe by hitting Shift F. And I'm going to say, OK, you know, I want some flowers to be in these locations right here. It's something like this. Now, if I hover over the actual area in which I've pre-selected by pressing Alt and just tapping one time with the left mouse button, I can now press and hold the space bar. And it now acts like the Z modeler brush. So for here, I can now come through and say, OK, all the poly groups that I've selected, instead of individual, I want those to utilize. And now I can drag out the shape that is there onto this character. And of course, too, it's, it's actually embedded into her head a little bit. So we can adjust that by going up to the brush menu, going to depth, and maybe pulling this up a little bit, changing the embed. And then I can drag this out. And you can see now it's kind of all over the place, right? It's a little bit above, and it's in those selected areas. And from here now, I have a whole menu called Nano Mesh. And what's good about this is not only did I just use this to drag out the different components on the polygroup selected, but now what I can do is I can control the size, the width, the length, even the offset. Where do these things live? Right, And I can just have full control over what this is. I can even come through and do a randomization and kind of just distribute that wherever I would like or do a random seed. So I can have some, some good control. I can even create patterns over time. So there's a lot here that you could utilize. And then you can, again, like I said, it's not like a full crazy animated particle system, but it is something which you can utilize when you're making multiple um, iterations of kind of the same thing. What's also Ian, useful. Ian, yes, I have an interjection. How long is this procedurality retained for? So uh, because I do not know a ZBrush to save my life, uh, I can launch it. That's pretty much it. Um, this procedurality you're showing is absolutely uh, amazing. At what point does this get sort of baked down and you're done with a procedurality? So that's that's always user base, right? That's always like so when when you're ready to turn this into actual geometry, right? Sorry, um, you misunderstood my question. I did. Can yes. You, can you add another polygroup that has a different kind of flower and retain the procedurality for both these things? Yes. Oh. So see here. So what I did was I have this first setup here. Right, and I was affecting these. Now I want to add more. I'm done with these, so I'm going to add a few more here. So if I had another flower, I can drag these out, and now I can adjust those after the fact. So it, it, it does stack up. And you can go back and adjust the other ones after you've done this. Come back to so right up here in the index, I have index zero and I have index mm -hmm. one. Index zero would be the first sizes, and then index one would be the second sizes. And if I if I remember right, you can just keep stacking these and it'll just produce another index. So then now these, I want these to be, I want these to be huge. There we go. Those are much bigger. And that index one is going to be a little, those are in the back. And then index zero, those are in the front. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. No, great question. Yeah. So that would be the nano, that would be the nano mesh. And then to complete this, when you're done with it, because again, what's really neat about this is at any point in time, I could just turn this off because it's being dry or driven by these different poly groups. So I can turn this off anytime I want. Again, this is kind of that preview state, which is really just helpful when you're trying to conceptualize an idea or a thought process. But when I'm ready to turn this into, into an actual geometry, you'll have a couple options here. You'll have one to mesh and all to brush. And um, so here, if I say one to mesh, now here it actually turned around and made these, these flowers here, the first set, the first index became the, the, the live geometry. And if I remember right here, no, that's just all the brush. So I'd have to, yeah, I would just say, go to each one and just click which ones I wanted to have preview. And then that would be good. If I had them all to a brush, so if I backed up, 
Again, it's all control Zable. The all to brush, actually, when I did that, it turned around and created not only the mesh, but the, the uh, brush strokes that I had done into an actual brush itself. So if you had something you really liked and like, oh, I want all these to be in a brush set, that's what that would be for. And then, of course, too, you can come through and say like, hey, you know what? Uh, index Index one, that wasn't really good. So I'm going to delete that one, but it's going to keep my other indexes active. So you have full control over which one you would like to have. And again, you can just cycle through these at any time and make those adjustments as needed. I am impressed. Well, there you go. I'll take that. <laughs> I would like uh, I would like to change a thread and take a step back. I think that my very good friend Darren has uh, something to show us in terms of uh, ripples. Would that mm -hmm. be the case, my friend? Have you shared your screen, the correct oh, one? Yeah. Cool. Yes. Uh, yeah, you guys uh, see my picture viewer? We do see your screen. Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is a classic. Cinema 4D, all right? Um, not Redshift, because this is, uh, you know, one of Cinema 4D's old school channel shaders for the uh, old material system. It's called the Ripple Shader. And I'm just talking while this finishes rendering um, so I can play it back. Um, and it's, it, it's really made just for the bump channel of a material. Okay, but I have, um, so let me show you. Can you guys even see that on your end? Yes. Yeah, Could you yeah. click, you yeah. can click the hide button. It, uh, zoom in, button. zoom in to your uh, render view where there's a ripple because I just managed to see it and just scrub. There you go. Now we're starting to see the ripples a bit, a bit more where they touch and, and it's the compression of uh, the, the stream as well. Yeah. There we go. Now I can see one clearly. I can see another one. Yep, keep going. So what this shader does is it's looking for particles and a polygon object's surface. And when that particle hits that surface, it triggers this ring's expansion, which also uh, fades off over time. Um, and there's a whole bunch of controls here. Let me show you the setup real quickly. Um, so I have uh, just the old school legacy emitter. This is like before thinking particles. It's just this guy. Um, and uh, I just got the spheres in here so that we can sort of see them hit the floor, um, which is just a plane with this material, dark color, uh, some reflection with a water Fresnel dielectric. And then here in the bomb channel is the ripple shader. Now you can only see the ripple shader when you render to the picture viewer. Okay, so you can't, you know, press play, go halfway through here and then render your view. You're, it just sadly doesn't work. You have to run into the picture viewer to see it. Now let's go into the ripple shader. And take a look. The first thing you got to do after you add it, and uh, it is located in the effects uh, subcategory down here. Um, ripple, the ripple shader. So the first thing you got to do is uh, you have to choose what object the ripples will be appearing on, right? Which, uh, like, what's this going on? This material is going on the plane. And it does have to be a polygon object. Um, and then you have to define the particles. Now here, I'm using this legacy emitter, but you can use uh, a, um, a TP particle group here. Um, and then all of these other settings, I believe, are default, except for fall off. I turned that up. Um, and, you know, it, Again, it's really simple effect, but I, you know, there's no other way for me to uh, this quickly create this type of effect. Um, sure, we could do it with fields, 
uh, and vertex maps. But now, like, uh oh, you guys still with me? Yep. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my cinema appears to not be responding. Um, but if I, you know, was doing this with a vertex map, I would need a tremendous amount of vertices mm. to get in, you know, equal, uh, like round ring, you know, um, and that calculates slower than this shader. Um, yeah, my, my cinema is, I'm going to stop sharing because my cinema is not responding. Um, but ripple shader, very cool effect. Um, check it out. And, um, yeah, any questions about that guys? Well, it doesn't work with the redshift. It's only for uh, standard and physical. Yeah. yeah yep. Standard. And physical. It's, it's simple. It just works on it because it's a shader. It doesn't need a, like you said, in the vertex or whatever, it's going to work on whatever, uh, every time. Let's hope they, they make it uh, compatible. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if you want to hack it, where you can put the ripple shader in a luminance channel. It'll create a, create a black and white channel, and then bake this to a series of frames, and then read that as a movie. But having mm -hmm. something like that, um, having Redshift being a, being able to work on a shader level with uh, scene positions, particles, and and all that, that will be that will be great. Maybe there is a way. Maybe there is a way, but uh, I don't think it's um, uh, automated. Hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll investigate. We'll investigate. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, Dustin, you haven't showed anything. Now, there, there's not a single question about uh, CG objects and, and tracking and all that. What I assume happened was that the instruction we gave you over five weeks was so complete and so deep <laughs> and wide that it solved all your problems. So yeah. I'm very, I'm very glad uh, we can provide that quality of education where we solve all your potential problems and no questions come up. That's fantastic. I feel so much better now. <laughs> yeah. Do, does anybody have a question about the uh, the integration? Um, um, CG objects in the in the photos videos maybe how to set up uh some well, we, of that stuff in in redshift we we did have a question about the node editor um that came through just said uh, do you guys know if node editor can reference shaders like the old shaders did like pathing one shader onto another yes it does uh, you just use the reference shader as uh, you know with the new node, node system yes yeah, it works it's a bit wonky uh, when i tried it it uh I'm not sure it's 100% compatible, but uh, it did work when uh, when they used it. It's, a, it's just reference shader. Yeah, that allows you to choose the surface or displacement to reference from another uh, another material or shader. Yeah. Is it possible to have Redshift works with AMD cards? Is that at the time? What? Sorry, somebody asked another question about Redshift if it works with AMD cards. Is that something? AMD curves? AMD cards, like video cards. Does Redshift oh, yes. work with AMD? Uh, yes, no, it does. Yes, um, but quite specific. You, you you need to check the Maxon website. It's very it's, it's very new. I think it's uh, it's been like that for uh, a few months only. But uh, the newer uh, AMD card works with Redshift, and they work quite quite well. Uh, I think the, the highest, um, uh, the, the best of AMD is like uh, a 3090 or something like that, like that but uh, cheaper and with more RAM. So it's, it's quite interesting, actually. Yes. Well, without any further questions, I think that we can wrap this up in just an hour and 18 minutes. So any final thoughts, any uh, last minute questions going once? Going I got a thought. I just think it's cool to 
so have this time with you guys today. <laughs> Likewise, it's always like fun. That. Yeah, it's always it is. Fun. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. Okay, so I am going to take the screen, remove. And thank you, Kyle. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I'm going to remove all our mugs from the screen so we can focus on the closing housekeeping. Uh, go to maxon.net to find out information about uh, Maxon products. Uh, really nice uh, website. Uh, go to the Maxon events and find out what events are going on online and in real life. Go to the Maxon training team, YouTube channel, Red Giant, Maxon, ZBrush, ZBrush Central, Twitch, and all that stuff where you can find amazing content and uh, live stream shows and recorded shows and all that. If you want to become a certified pro user in Cinema 4D or a certified trainer, please visit the certification page and find out all the information. The design and animation tour is ongoing and on the 11th of June, 2023 in Nashville, and Nashville it's taking place uh, with our amazing presenters. Uh, these are not real photos, right? These are avatars, just in case. And of course, you can go and get your merch using the code, using the code, the code, I'm waiting for the code. There you go, ZBrush and Substance. <laughs> and one, you can choose an item, and uh, a single item, and uh, you just pay for shipping and handling. We do handle it very gently. So uh, let's go back to the faces. And I would like to say thank you to everyone that uh, attended and uh, thank you to all my friends and colleagues uh, that uh, um, joined us today uh, with this uh, amazing breadth of knowledge, except for Dustin that was just sitting there watching us. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was that day. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that day. So do me a favor, next time, Dustin's on the air. Uh, he owes us uh, some uh, content. You, you need to ask questions, whatever, even questions you've asked in the past. Uh, if uh, Dustin is anything like me, I forget what I did five minutes ago. So I will ve be very excited and happy to show you exactly the same thing I showed you just minutes before, thinking it's the first time. So, <laughs> because yeah. you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Pretty much. Uh, like the film Memento, you know. Everything is new. Good film. Perfect, perfect. Oh, yeah, well. Thanks, everyone, for sure. Also, I just, I'm going to throw it out there real quick. Student teacher license for for a very, 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 very affordable price. Mm -hmm. uh, cheaper than a meal in, in most places in the world. I'll say it that way. Go check yeah. it out. I've dropped the link in the chat as well. So if you are somebody who wants to get into the software, is in college, high school, and you're like, how do I, how do, I do a thing? Go check that out. Cheaper than a meal, I promise. And that's all. That's max on one. That's everything. That's everything. Yeah. yeah. So get in there, ZBrush. There's also ZBrush Core Mini for those of you who want to try sculpting for free. Boom. Sweet. Woohoo. You're muted. <laughs> I, I pressed the button before you said it. <laughs> it's not my fault. And on that note, there we get the end credits. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>